my name is Jillian. I blog at doingawaywithperfect.com and um, today I want to talk about 10 ways to take control of your time. We all wish we had more time in a day. I know I certainly do. I could get a lot more done. But we all only have the same 24 hours and we do have to spend some of them sleeping. Or if you work, you're at a full-time job. So here are a few ways that you can take back control of your time and fit some extra time into your busy schedule. One is to have a system. You need to have a place where you put all your appointments, everything that you need. It can be a paper planner, electronic planner. It doesn't matter as long as it's something that helps you. This is my weekly planner. I put, I start on Sunday and I plan my whole week out and then I leave it sitting on my desk and I put little um, boxes next to it so I can check it off and that's how I know what I need to get done this week. Now it's not a solid plan, sometimes things will come up and I don't get them done but this is a general overview of what I want to get done. You can also, and then from all my appointments and stuff and I use my Google Calendar because that sends me reminders because I'll forget otherwise. So like doctor's appointments, kids events, um, I put them all into my Google Calendar. This is more of like my workout schedule, what I want to get done on my blog, um, and also any appointments that I need to do, just a weekly overview of what I want to get done. So just have a system. Pick a planner. If you like paper planners, um, pick one of them. Or if you... We all always have our phone on us, so a Google Calendar or some kind of calendar app is also a great idea. Two is have others use your system. Now, I have a husband, a teenage daughter, a preteen daughter, and a son who is six. Obviously, my son doesn't have access to my calendar, but my two girls and my husband do have phones, so they are connected to our Google Calendar so that when they have something, they can add it in, and they know to add it in. My daughter's not the best at this, but I'm trying to get her to work better at it. So when they have an event to look there, to look on the calendar to see what's going on before they plan something, just have others use it. If you have a whiteboard in your kitchen, have others put their stuff on there that they are going to do. Whatever system you have, make sure others know about it and know where to put the event, especially if it's going to be something that affects you. Three is look at your calendar. When you're making an appointment or something comes up and you need to schedule it in, look at your calendar before you agree to it because you need to know what you have planned that day. If you have two things planned at the same time, you can't be two places at once. So actually look at your calendar. If it's a paper calendar, you need to take it with you everywhere. Put it in your purse. Make sure it's with you so that you can pull it out when somebody says, oh, can you do this at this time? You can look at your calendar and say, oh, yes, I can or no, I can't. Four, hold on, I'm looking at my notes, <laughs> is to say no. We feel bad when we say no to people. I know I feel bad sometimes when I say no to people, but you know what? We can't do everything and we can't fit everything into our schedule. So saying no a little more often will free up some time for you. So, and you don't even have to give an excuse. If somebody says something, say, oh, thank you so much for thinking of me, but I really can't do that at this time. That's as simple as that. You don't have to make up an excuse. You don't have to fumble with your words and try to tell them every reason why you can't. Just simple as that, you know? To say no more often to create that white space in your calendar, especially if it's something you really don't want to do. <laughs> Next is think about your buffer time when you are planning things. Okay, so what is buffer time? Buffer time is that time in between things, like um, the driving time. If you have a doctor's appointment but it's 30 minutes away, you need to schedule that. Doc you need to put in your calendar that you need to start driving 30 minutes before. So that doctor's appointment if it's, if it's at 2 p.m., it really is starting at 1.30 because you need the time to drive or really like 1.15 because aren't you supposed to be there 15 minutes early? So like 1.15, you need to start driving. So really, you can't schedule anything for 1.30 because then you'll never make that doctor's appointment on time. So you need that buffer time in between things. And sometimes I need buffer time in between work and home. I like to sit in my car for five minutes and just like decompress from work and get into mom mode and... I need that little bit of buffer time to clear my mind and get my mind into a different mindset. So make sure you're scheduling in buffer time between your events. Six, get up early or stay up late. Depending on if you're a morning person, an evening person, 
pick what works best for you. I personally am a morning person. I get up at 4.50 every morning. I know I'm crazy, but I think better in the morning and I get more stuff done in the morning before my kids wake up. But if you are a night owl, then stay up later than your kids to get stuff done. Just find those time where you can actually focus and get what you need done. Those times where you think the best. We all have that time of day where we know that we think better than we do at other times. For me, that is definitely in the morning. I think a lot better. So schedule in that time when you know you can do dedicated work and have 100% focus on it. Whether that's in the night, middle of the day, the morning, whenever works best for you, do that. Just because everybody says you should get up earlier, if it doesn't work for you, then you're not going to be productive and it's not going to help you at all. So do what works for you. Next. Create some white space, that white space in your calendar. You do not have to fill up every space in your calendar. It would drive you crazy and you will be overwhelmed and stressed all the time. So make sure you have some space where you have nothing planned. And in that time, you can do whatever you feel like doing. You know, if you feel like relaxing or taking a bath or if you feel like cleaning the kitchen, then do it. Whatever you feel like doing in that white space, be in the moment and just do what feels right for you. And make sure you have that space so that you can take a break and not feel so overwhelmed and stressed. Review your schedule. (laughs) Find a time that works for you to review it. I like to review mine in the morning because like I said, I think better in the morning. So I review that day in the morning to see what I have to do and need to get done for that day. Sometimes this would be better for you to do the night before. But just make sure you're looking at the next day schedule or that day schedule Um, so that you can know what you have to do within that day. I try not to go past um, that day. Like I said, I do plan for the week on Sunday, but then when I'm really thinking about, like, can I really do this the next day, I look at that list in the morning and decide, oh, you know what, I really can't fit this in today, and I cross it off. So just make sure you're reviewing your schedule each night before or each morning to see what you have to get done. Number nine is guard your schedule. (laughs) Guard it. Make sure that you are using it and that it's working for you. If you have a system that everybody says, oh, this is great and it works well, but it doesn't work for you, then it's not for you and you need to change and find something that does work for you. And when you do find that one thing, stick to it and make sure you are doing it and guard it and know that this is my schedule, my time. I'm going to do what I need to do with it. You know, we all do things we don't want to do like work and doctor's appointments, but make sure you're guarding your time, how you want to spend it. If you have that white space, don't fill it up just because it's white or because somebody says, oh, you're free. Maybe we can do this. You know, tell them no, say no and guard your time. And then the last thing, join my challenge. I have a free challenge called um, From Overwhelmed to Not. It's about Um, time management, organizing, learning to um, embrace who you are and all your imperfections. It just is a quick free five-day email challenge to help you go from being overwhelmed with your time and your life and your stress to helping you get a little more relief and with some tips and tricks to stop the overwhelm. So you can sign up for that. I will put the link um, it either be below or in the comments. Sometimes I'm not sure where I can put it. But um, sign up for that. It's completely free. Um, you have nothing to lose. So just watch the videos. It's five days. You have five days to fit in these less than five minute videos. They're less than five minutes. Put them on while you're getting ready in the morning um, so that you can listen to them and maybe feel a little less overwhelmed. So let me know if you have any tips to controlling your time better. I would love to hear your tips. Put them in the comments below. Let me know what they are so that... Um, Yeah, we can talk about them. Maybe I could add them. I'll do a follow-up and add the your tips into this. And I hope you all have a great day.